There's a whole lot of stuff we have going on during uh, Spring Live here, the, the full 24 hours. Hopefully you're one of the brave people who's just staying up straight to watch it all as it happens. Anyhow, uh, you know, to, to sort of like set you off on, on kind of giving you an idea of why I think it's important to uh, get better at software development, get better at running the software, get better at operating it, and get better at the way your teams work. To overall get better, uh, I wanted to go over just that, like what the end goal looks like, like what we're all shooting for and why. I want to tell the story of uh, one company who got really good at software and how that resulted in changing the way that their business operated in a positive way and changing the way that their customers uh, interact with them, making people's lives more interesting. So Daimler is a, uh, a customer of, of VMware. They use uh, the Tanzu stack. Um, and they, over the years, have uh, set up part of their organization uh, to actually get uh, quite good at software in a product-oriented way to really improve the way they do things and pay attention to it more in uh, kind of the way that us tech companies would. We are on a very fast feedback cycle. You have teams dedicated to the product that they're working on. They're set up to be innovative, to be curious about uh, how they can solve people's problems, to have the autonomy needed supported by tools like the Tanzu stack and other things that allow them to not have to sit around and wait for a ticket uh, to be answered, just to set up a developer environment, let alone deploy to production. So the team uh, in particular, this story comes from, and you can read the full uh, thing documented down there in my recent book, The Business Bottleneck. But they were in charge of the front end for people like you and me, consumers looking for cars. You know, you go in there and you search for the, uh, whether it's some of the sporty cars that Mercedes has, maybe the kind I would be more interested in, uh, like a station wagon, make sure there's plenty of room in the uh, back for a dog, all sorts of things like that. But you go there when you want to start doing research, when you're at the very beginning of the car buying process. So you can think of this globally, right? Don't just think about the geography you're in, but globally, this is a core business process, right? This is the beginning of someone buying uh, a Mercedes, like a very important process that, that's going on there. So, you know, they would search, people search for it and they can configure the car, make hot rods or practical cars, uh, whatever. But because this team was curious and, and they had been set up as a product team, right, not a project team, uh, they started looking at, uh, they used their curiosity to start looking at what people were searching for. And they found something interesting. There were a lot of people who were searching for these sprinter vans, uh, these professional vans that you would see plumbers and delivery truck drivers or ice cream uh, people uh, using. Now, what was sort of uh, a problem as far as the team saw was that there actually weren't search results for these vans uh, like there were cars. Now, this came about because of a structural thing that you'll see in most large businesses, which totally makes sense in many situations, that the professional van line was a completely different business unit than the, uh, the car line, right? And if you look at the things, all the business units that Daimler has uh, across, you know, uh, 18 wheelers and other things like that, you can certainly understand why you would have separate business units to divide these products up. They have different markets, different buyers, different requirements as products. But what this team discovered, and this is, this is a great example of a very product oriented team, right? What they discovered is that those lines uh, that the business had determined weren't how uh, us customers saw it, right? There were people actually generally interested in these vans. So like any good product team, relying on on the, the kind of tooling in place that they've had, the thought technologies of being product oriented, the team thought of an experiment to do. And their experiment was, broadly put, let's include search results. Like our theory is that people are interested in buying these, these vans, uh, these sprinters, and so let's experiment with what happens when we show them those results. And let's kind of put in place, I don't know the exact uh, criteria that they had, but let's say that their criteria was, um, you know, people will actually click on this and they'll configure it and they'll schedule going to a dealership or a, a fleet dealership, as it were, to look at these things. So well, they went back and talked with the, uh, with the, the Sprinter line of business and, and they uh, figured out integrating with the, um, the inventory database and showing that there. And I think you can probably imagine what the result is, otherwise I wouldn't be telling you, but they totally validated the theory uh, with software, right? 
with cloud native architecture and infrastructure, right? And this is why it's fun because all these things that we talk about and they'll, that you'll be learning how to, uh, you know, do better in, in kind of looking at Spring as your enterprise architecture and relying on cloud native infrastructure, like Tanzu application service and Tanzu's Kubernetes grid, things like that. It really results in this kind of situation where what Daimler learned was that people like the uh, like Luke and his family here, uh, they definitely are interested in these vans, right? They look at them as when they go off on their their two month trip uh, with their family. Uh, it, it's it's something vital to making their life a lot more interesting. And if you can see, if you you know check out the inside of the van that uh, the Kinesis is set up here, it really is like uh, uh, it's beneficial they could get their hands on one of these. But what the team found through a process of experimenting, right? Enabled by this product, this software mentality and supported by that stack of software underneath is that, you know, the, the van line could uh, tap this new source of revenue relatively free with a small amount of investment, almost, you know, in the grand scheme of thing near zero. And suddenly they're, they're directly changing the business for the van line and also for the car line, right? They're widening it out. So in my mind, that is a prime example of what it means to have a programmable business, right? Not, it's, it's a prime example of digital transformation, right? It's not just digitizing some paper thing, but you're really getting to the point where the same agility that we can have in software is agility that we can have in business. Getting to that point um, is great, right? But I have found over the years that most organizations are not really set up to achieve that, right? And it can be frustrating. I know, I, I, back when I was a programmer, I was endlessly frustrated at how hard it was to try out things that seemed simple and beneficial. And I think a large part of what's preventing organizations from getting there is not that will to do it, right? Everyone wants to do a better job, but they don't have uh, the modern contemporary tools uh, needed that doesn't allow them to operate in a modern way. And indeed, over the years, I've definitely seen this uh, in, in play, right? So what you see from here is that most organizations are not really capable of releasing software frequently enough, right? So if, if you're running those experiments, you're coming up with a new idea that you want to express and experiment with in software. If you, if, if you can't release your software on a weekly basis, maybe every two weeks, you're just not going to get a fast enough feedback loop to actually do anything, right? Like imagine coming up with that theory uh, about selling Sprinter vans to uh, consumers and it taking six, 12 months to, to really try out. And then more importantly, as you discover, like, you know, the 10 or 15 different tweaks that you want to make, taking another six months, another 12 months to test those things out. And I think tool wise, like it's this middle thing that I think is at least to me most shocking. And it is, you know, what, what you see is that many organizations don't even have continuous integration in place, right? Never mind continuous delivery, the ability to um, actually deploy the software on, on a daily or weekly basis. They don't even have integration where, you know, when you check in your code, it makes sure it integrates with all the other existing code, make sure all your tests passed, make sure all your, your sort of compliance of frameworks to use pass. So, you know, there's, I think my estimate is that there's only about 40, maybe 50% of organizations that have that. But I think, I think it all results in what you see in that first one, right? That very few organizations have had the, the chance to improve their applications, to add new features that are large and material. So, so what do we do? What, what do I see organizations doing to start addressing this problem, right? I think there's something very important. That's very, a very simple concept that like all simple concepts, uh, are not done very widely <laughs> that people do. And that is uh, that they try to take a bigger end to end view of what their process is. And when they look at that, let's call it a software supply chain. When they look at that software supply chain that feeds into their business into doing uh, innovation and experimenting, they look at that entire supply chain as their tool and they optimize that entire uh, chain. Now, that implies something, and I think this is the part that a lot of people skip over, is you have to know what that, that software supply chain is, right? And I would, I would um, you know, when you've, you've had your fill of, uh, get, you know, seeing the, the, uh, the talks today about how to do a lot of spring things and other things better, I would encourage you to take some time, get out a sheet of paper, and try to write down what that entire end-to-end -end process is, all the way as, uh, as was said uh, you know, a while ago by some of the, the DevOps luminaries, all the way from concept to ka-ching in a, in a commercial concept, right? So 
Think of an idea that, that you have. We would like to integrate vans uh, into search results and write down every single thing from having that idea to a user, not only having it in production and someone using it, but to you gathering that feedback and seeing if your theory was validated. You can, you know, an even fun thing to do is not only doing this process for deploying one line of code, but for deploying exactly the same version of the software that you had in production, right? Like just assume that you had to deploy that over again um, and just go through every single process and write that down. And I think what you'll find is that there's a lot going on there. And you'll also find if you actually are honest about the governance, all the meetings you have to have, kind of waiting around for tickets, all of the things that are necessary, uh, you'll find that there's an incredible amount of things to optimize. Now, we in uh, VMware Tanzu land, we can help out with lots of things there. Um, I would suggest that maybe at every single point in there, we have something to help you out with. But what's going to be unique to you is the exact nature of that, that workflow what needs to be improved, and how you're situated to manage it, and the changes you need to go through uh, to get those advantages that someone like a Daimler had when managing that workflow. So it's going to be worth it. Like It, it is a, a tremendous amount of work. People often don't realize uh, how much work it is to go and optimize that. But you're definitely going to get great results doing it, right? And I like to think in things of term of technical improvements and business improvements, sort of performance gains across those two things, right? Uh, and there definitely are very well documented, uh, believable, totally possible technical improvements to do, right? And so these are some figures from actual uh, customers of ours that, that you can see. Now, e equally importantly, maybe if not more for motivating changes, there are very real business improvements that, that you can have. And I mean, I'll highlight just two of the things here. Uh, one of our customers, Comcast, uh, their their business goal was to reduce uh, call volume to their call centers, right? So someone has a problem with the, their internet or their TV, they're going to call someone, they have to wait around for it. Uh, and overall, just the experience of something going wrong and having to work through it with someone on the phone is always, no matter how well it's done, a low customer experience, right? It's not as good as it can be. So they introduced uh, some machine learning and AI-driven chatbots kind of following this, this approach to things. And they not only reduced their call volume by 40%, a huge savings, right, uh, on their side, but they also were able to increase the, their customer experience and their customer satisfaction because problems got solved faster and the system was always learning about new problems to solve. Now, another great example uh, that's, that's a uh, Tanzu customer is Liberty Mutual, who using uh, the Tanzu stack, Tanzu application service, and uh, our, the, the approach that, that we helped them learn to doing product-driven software, they were able to launch a brand new business selling uh, motorcycle insurance in Australia in just six months, which is an, astonishing, uh, uh, which is an astonishingly fast rate of, of, of not only launching a business, but deploying any software. And then they were able to constantly improve that and make the process better and more efficient, which also led to uh, revenue today instead of revenue tomorrow. So time to market is really the core of what you get, uh, the first benefit you get on the business side, but then also improvements and improve, you know, even addressing not only uh, sort of optimizing revenue, but those very hard to uh, quantify things like customer satisfaction. So I think that is why we're here, right? And I've already kind of said this and made it obvious, but we're here to make better software, right? As you go through the, the, the rest of the day, the, the rest of the sessions, you know, obviously focus on what's in the session and, and the kind of learnings that you're getting from it. But always keep in mind that the reason that you're doing this and, you know, to be realistic, to entertain yourself and get better at your craft. But when you apply that, to going back to your to your work, to your job. Whatever software you're working on, think about who's using this software, what context, what organization is it benefiting, and how can I get better at doing software so that this organization can run better, so that my the people using my software, so that their life uh, you know, is more interesting, is more productive. And I always focus on what I'm trying to do with my craft is make better software. That's the end goal that I have however I kind of fit into all of this. So I hope you enjoy the uh, rest of the sessions and they really help you uh, get better at software. Um, and with that, thanks for uh, listening and we'll see everyone next time.